Marco Polo. He was born in Venice into a wealthy merchant's family. In 1260, Marco Polo's dad and uncle left Venice to travel to the Black Sea, then to Central Asia, and visited Kublai Khan, the Mongol ruler of China. Nine years later, in 1269, the Khan sent them back to Venice to ask the Pope to send scholars to explain Christian religion to him. In 1271, they left Venice again to return to the Khan with two missionaries and Marco Polo. The travel lasted four years. They arrived in 1275 to Kublai Khan, where they stayed for the next 70 years. During this time, Marco Polo was sent on missions by the Khan and he seen many parts of China. In 1292, the Poles were sent back to Venice, but this time they visited Sumatra, Sri Lanka, Southern India and the Persian Gulf. From Iran they went to Istanbul. Then they arrived to Venice in 1295. This travel lasted three years. When arrived back, Marco Polo was put to prison where he met a writer who wrote down his travels. He died in Venice in 1324. Marco Polo's travels influenced Christopher Columbus. He was born in 1451 in Genoa, Italy. His parents were merchants. People in Europe wanted to find a new sea route to east to trade with Asia. Columbus wanted to sail west because maps of the time made the oceans look smaller. Columbus hoped he could reach China in a few days. He needed money for his journey. Columbus tried to ask rich people to help him. Most laughed at him. At last, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain gave him money for ships. In return, he promised them new land, spices, gold and new people to rule. Columbus set sail in August 1492. He had three ships, the Niña, the Pinta and the Santa Maria. The voyage took longer than Columbus expected. There was no land, just ocean. The sailors got scared. They were running out of food and water. After 36 days, a sailor on the Pinta spotted an island and explorers went to shore. Columbus believed he reached India, but the island was actually in the Bahamas. He called it San Salvador. The locals had gold, what he promised to Queen Isabella. He named the Native American people Indians because he thought he landed in India. Columbus then sailed onto Hispaniola, now called Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, and to Cuba. He did not discover America because people were already living there. At first, the Native Americans were happy to see Columbus. He gave them cheap presents. He also claimed the island for Spain. Columbus enslaved the local people and forced them to mine gold. But there wasn't much of it and the conditions on the island were poor. A lot of people died. On a third trip, 
Columbus reached South America at the shores of Venezuela, but his enemies said he had ruled Hispaniola to make himself rich. He was sent back to Spain to prison. Luckily, the king and queen set him free, but he's lost most of his wealth. He spent the last two years of his life as a bitter and sick man. He died in 1506 in Valladolid, still thinking he found Asia. Columbus's travels have influenced many other explorers, like James Cook. He was born in the village of Martin, Yorkshire, in 1728. In the 18th century, the Pacific Ocean was still uncharted. In 1768, Cook set sail on his ship, the Endeavour, from Plymouth and he sailed around Cape Horn and into the Pacific, anchoring by the island of Tahiti. Then the Endeavour continued on to the North Island of New Zealand before sailing onto the South Island. Then they continued toward Tasmania and the east coast of Australia. They anchored in Botany Bay. Cook made maps of both New Zealand and 2000 kilometers of the Australian East Coast. They found many new species of plants and animals. They have seen many different types of eucalyptus trees. The bottle brush tree, koalas and kangaroo. They might have seen wild dingoes and some of them possibly made friends with the aboriginals of Australia and they kept them like dogs even though they are wild animals. In 1773, Cook's ships entered the Antarctic Circle several times but because of the cold were forced to turn back. Cook explored the island of Hawaii where he found that he was treated as God by the islanders. After a short time, Cook's ships left but forced to turn back to Hawaii a few days later so the ship needed repairs. This time the mood had changed when Cook had a dispute with the islanders during a struggle. Cook was stabbed and killed on 14 of February 1779. James Cook's achievements in mapping the Pacific, New Zealand and Australia fully changed understanding of world geography and proved him to be the most able and enlightened navigator that England ever produced. Thank you.